This example is not quite a quadratic inequality, but that doesn't mean that we can't use the methods we've already used on our quadratic inequalities to solve this. So the first thing we need to understand is that we need to find those critical values. Find those values where this polynomial is equal to zero. And then we can break up our number line and do a sign chart and figure out where are we positive and where are we negative. So in order for us to do that, let's just rewrite this guy as an equation. So 5x to the third minus 2x squared minus 20x plus 8 is equal to 0. And it looks like we can factor this guy by grouping. So in the first group we have the common factor of x squared leaving us with 5x minus 2. In the second group, we lead off with a negative. And the common factor for 20 and 8 is 4. And so this gives me neg or, excuse me, positive 5x and minus 2. So we see that we do get to finish factoring this guy by grouping because these factors are exactly the same. So 5x minus 2 times x squared minus 4. And now I think we should go ahead and finish factoring this because we see we have x squared minus 4 and that guy is the difference of squares. So it factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And from here, now that we have the complete factorization, we can find all of our critical values. So from here, when we set this equal to 0, x is equal to positive 2 over 5. Or from here, x equals negative 2. Or x equals positive 2. Now for something that's to the third power here, we don't necessarily know what the shape is, so it's not like the quadratics that are parabolas and we know their shape. So let's go to the sign chart. Let's use that to help us get an idea about where this expression can be positive or negative. So as we've done in the past, we take each factor on its own and we determine the sign pattern. And then we're going to see what happens when we put everything back together in the product that forms the polynomial. All right. Well, I got really crooked. Well, I'm not going to change it now. We just have to make sure that we put our critical values in the right order. So we see we've got negative 2, so that's the only negative number, so that's on the left. And then we have a positive 2 over 5 and then positive 2. So we make our dashed lines going up here to create our different sections, our different intervals. And let's see what we get here. So 5x minus 2 has a critical value at 2 over 5. So there's going to be 0 there. Since we have a positive lead coefficient, he's going to be negative on the left side of this, and he's going to be positive for every region to the right of that. Then we move on to x plus 2. His critical value is negative 2. In fact, the reason we have negative 2 is because we set x plus 2 equal to 0, right? So this factor will give you negative values for anything you plug in that's less than negative 2. And beyond negative 2, anything you plug in, you're going to get back a positive number. You plug in negative 1, you get a positive. You plug in something in here like 1 or 3, it's going to give you a positive value from that factor. And then x minus 2. So x minus 2 has a critical value over here at 2. And just like everybody else, he's going to be negative leading up to that, and then he's going to be positive. All right, so now each section, let's talk about what we have. In this first section, you have three negative factors, which means this guy's going to be negative in that region. And then over here, you have two negative factors and a positive, so you end up with a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive. 
Over here, you have one negative factor, so you get a negative in this region. And over here, everything is positive, so it's going to be positive in that region. And then where you have your critical values, you're going to be zero. All right, so let's go back and look at our original inequality to see what it says. For the original inequality, we're looking for where we are greater than or equal to zero. So being greater than or equal to zero means where are you positive or equal to zero. So we're positive here and right here. And we're equal to zero, which means we're going to include this, that guy, and this one. So these are all of the regions and those points that are going to make up our solution. So because it says greater than or equal to zero. So that means we're talking about this region in between here and greater than 2 and we are also including all of these endpoints just like that all right so our interval notation is going to be bracket negative 2 to 2 over 5 bracket you've got a gap here so we're going to use the union sign gap or excuse me brackets and then uh, two going all the way to the right toward infinity um, like this and uh, yeah that is our answer uh, one thing one of the things to notice about these quadratic inequalities is that I don't use the inequality symbols I go down through here I turn this into an equation so that I can identify the critical values. I use my sign chart and then I go back up here to see what regions uh, was I supposed to be looking for. I'm looking for those regions that are greater than zero and so that's going to be these positive regions and also those endpoints because that could be equal to zero. Now suppose I change this up real quick. If this had been different, if it said 5x to the third minus 2x squared minus 20x plus 8 and then it said less than 0. Well being less than 0 does not change the end result of your sign chart. So at the end for your sign chart alright so we've got the negative 2, the 2 over 5 and the 2. The pattern for your signs would still be exactly the same, where you have negative, zero, positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. That's what this guy is going to look like no matter what. If I change the direction of the inequality, that just changes what I'm looking for. If I change it to less than zero, that means I'm looking for those regions where you get negative output values, which corresponds to, to the left side of negative two, and then in between 2 over 5 and positive 2. And since it says less than but not equal to, those endpoints would remain open. So when we write the interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to negative 2 parentheses, union 2 fifths to 2 parentheses on both of those because it says less than but not equal to. But the key thing I want to point out here is that the signs you get from the sign chart would be the same no matter what. It's just at the end, what are you looking for? You're looking for less than zero, greater than zero, what? And once you know the regions you're looking for, you circle those guys and you color in the appropriate regions on the number line so that you can get your interval notation.